Hi everybody and welcome to this chapter on converters, listeners, and validators. This is your 11th chapter in a Java E7 tutorial. The previous chapter, we explained the components you can add to a web page, while this chapter will go over the additional functionality of converters, listeners, and validators, and what they bring to your web page. So first of all, let's go over what converters, listeners, and validators are. Converters are used to convert data being received. Listeners are used for listening to events happening on the page and perform actions as defined by you. And validators are used to make sure that the data received has met some requirement before being processed. So getting right into converters, we can see that the idea of converters are to convert the string-based data coming from the servlet API to hard-coded Java to allow the business domain to work with it. In this example, you can see that uh, you're taking the um, imp, you're taking the stuff that's coming from the Java class, and you're converting it to something that your user can understand. Like for example, this date format right here. Another way to output the date would be in this pattern over here, which would output this kind of um, like kind of like format. In here, you can see that. Uh, um, you can see that you can put your even your locale too. So let's say you want your locale to be like Espanol, which means Spanish, and you want it to be long. So that means you get a long date and it's in Spanish. Then there's number converting, which in this example gives you the total prices of the items inside the shopping cart. One thing you want to make sure is that you want to have the um, stuff that's in your Java bean, you want to make sure that it's under the java.lang.number tree, which means that whenever you're passing stuff through this, you want to make sure that it's a number, not like a string or like a boolean or something. Then there's registering listeners on components. So in this example over here, we can see here that this puts a custom listener on the name component through the value change listener tag. In this tag, uh, it, will, it will trigger the listener if there's any change to made to the name text, which means that this uh, class over here will run if anything is changed in the name tag. Then there is registering an action listener, which is similar to the value listener above, but this one checks if the user has done an action, uh, for example, clicking a link, and then it runs the written listener that we've written over here. Then now we got standard validators. So the first way that we can validate is using validator tags. So in this case, we can see that this validator tag makes sure that the number inputted is greater than one character, but you can also use EL or expression language that we've seen in previous chapters to create dynamic validation instead of setting literals down, just like the previous example where uh, it checks for only uh, one character. Here you can change it in your um, Java bean and then it will take the minimum or the maximum from your Java bean, and then it will use that instead. Validation is also super useful when you want to ask the user to create a strong password. The example uh, right here shows how it checks if the password has at least one digit, one lowercase letter, one uppercase letter, and is at least four to 10 characters long. Now let's get uh, into referencing a managed bean method. So referencing a managed bean method uh, that performs navigation, right? Uh, this action attribute can do two things. This action attribute over here, it can either return a logical string that tells the application what page to access. So it literally injects an, uh, a string into your URL and then that URL is then run automatically. Or it sends a request to a managed bean, which in this case it does, and then return that then returns a logical string to the web page, which then runs that URL. Then there's a referencing a method that handles an action event. So here in this uh, like uh, tag, this uh, action listener attribute uh, over here listens for the user to click onto this link and then runs the manage beans method choose book from link from this manage bean called action bean. Then there's a referencing a method that validates. So the manage uh, beans method validate uh, validate number ranged. Um, over here, it validates the number inputted. The validation changes with each input. Then there's referencing a method that handles a value change. Another listener that checks a value change this time, 
This manage beans method process value change handles a change to the value of the name of the event. And that's it. That's everything there is about using converters, listeners, and validators in a very high advanced functional way. You'll see more of these converters, listeners, and validators later on in the examples. So don't be taken aback by them. They're all they're doing is either converting into like stuff that like it's easier for you to read, listening for stuff like clicks or changes in values, or validating to make sure that you're inputting the right code or uh, that the code is right for the user to see. And that's it from me. I'll see you in the next video.